It is Friday, and that means it's Ask Liebs. It is I, Lieberman, and I have a whole bunch of emails for you for you to hear about the advice giving and the and the stuff. Hello, uh, just a just a reminder, folks, because like I get so many emails, and I always feel terrible when I'm not able to respond to all of them. I got like something in the number neighborhood of like 45 emails this week. And I was able to narrow it down to like 14 of them, which is still too many because it's definitely going to be over an hour today. Um, so please know that if, if your email does not get read or if you don't get a response, I read every email. I agonize over which ones I pick. Um, I pick ones... To, that I try, I, I tr basically I try to pick emails that either it's something that I feel like I haven't covered before because uh, we cover a lot of the same stuff here or it feels urgent or I don't know, there's, it just, it's hard but I, I pick what I can and I do what I can and uh, we're just gonna, we're gonna jump right in. Uh, okay, all right, please, how's your New Year's? Is it happy? I hope that it is a happy New Year's, New Year is, as it were. Uh, but actually before I get started, I want to quickly uh, just say something like, you know how, like I think it's almost, it's already become cliche, and I've said this before, that it's already become cliche to say it gets better, that life gets better when you're older. Um, like I wish there was a way to convey how fucking good life is and how fucking good it can be. I, uh, I got together with my best friend Alex and um, last night we went to this bar, uh, the Oyster House, which we went to around this time of year about three years ago and just like reminiscing and thinking about who we were then and who we are now, who we were when we came to LA like five years ago and you know, they <laughs> used to have this big outdoor patio where, where people could sit and drink and there'd be heat lamps and it was really, really cool. Uh, and apparently at some point since I'd last gone, it had been torn out. It just wasn't even there anymore for well over a year. And then New Year's Eve, they put, they built this brand new one. It was this little tiki bar and a bunch of seating areas and a couple of heat lamps. And the place was practically deserted and it was just me and Alex reminiscing, shooting the shit, enjoying our drinks, enjoying each other's company. And even though it was freezing, I was so, so happy to be living my life. And I swear to God, if I, if someone told me, even five years ago when I moved out here, that this would be my life now, I would have said bullshit. I would have, I wouldn't have believed it. It's, it's impossible to comprehend how good life can be because you have no frame of reference until you're already there. It's it's just it's it's a leap of faith. But I I tell you life can be just so very very good sometimes. Even just for a night, even for an hour, even for 20 minutes, life can be so very very good and fulfilling and sweet. And um I'm just feeling really, really happy and special right now. Uh, I'm, I'm wearing a, a scarf indoors because my apartment is colder uh, than the heart of a harpy raised in Saint, Satan's quarters. That's, uh, that's what I'm saying about it because I need to call a gas company because that's what I probably should have done today before I made this video, but it took me so long to sort the emails. Holy crap, we are almost five minutes in and I have not read one. So let's get started, shall we? <laughs> this is the show that doesn't get edited. All right. <clears throat> uh, Melissa. Melissa is one of the OG Libra friends and she wrote to me uh, about stage fright. So, uh, Melissa and Maddie Brunk, who are two of the Libra friends, sparked an idea for something that I think is cool, and I'm gonna put it out there so that more people can do it. Uh, the idea is the Libra friends, hashtag Libra friends sing along. That's one long hashtag challenge. Uh, and it's basically the challenge is cover, do a cover, like uh, a, a cover of the song that was number one on the Billboard charts the day you were born, and uh, upload the video of your cover sometime in the month of January. 
A number of Libra friends have expressed interest in the challenge, which is great. I however did not think this through as I have massive panic attack inducing stage fright when it comes to singing in front of people. Uh, this was my brilliant idea, so I have to do it. And a huge part of me is very excited about it, but I'm still terrified. Um, I'm really trying to do things that I wouldn't have had the courage to do before. You put yourself out there constantly and I imagine you're occasionally afraid. How do you combat stage fright or nerves? Um, well, okay. First of all, uh, oh, uh, she says, I got stuck with a pretty wretched song, Night Fever by the Bee Gees. Look, Melissa, the Bee Gees are amazing, and you are lucky to get to cover any of their work. Night Fever, Night Fever. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's going to be so good. I'm so excited. Um, yeah, in terms of dealing with nerves, it's just sort of like, oh, you just got to hack it. I mean, part of it is, Thankfully, once you're once you're on stage, there's no going back. Once you start shooting it, there's no going back. Once it's been released, there's no going back. And the I, that's helpful to me. The hard thing for me is starting. Like like these videos, the Ask Leibs videos, I hem and haw for like a couple of hours while I'm going through emails and I'm just sort of like, it's because I know it's going to be a draining experience and I don't know how I'll come off. And it, these videos terrify me sometimes. Um, but I also know it's like, it's also the most important thing that I think I do. Um, I guess the, the best way is just, just breathe. Just breathe and also it's a taped video. So just know, you don't have to worry about people's reactions, just go and shoot it for you. And then it's up to you whether or not you wanna, you wanna, upload it but I'll tell you what you're uploading it to a friendly happy healthy audience that wants to see all of these videos I'm eager to see all of these Libra friends sing-along videos so just know that whatever you do we support you and we're excited to see it and we're gonna applaud that's how I treat karaoke is it takes balls it takes guts to get up in front of people and sing a song it's the truth. And even if even if someone isn't very good, if they if it's obvious that they fucking sang their heart out or they they really really, you know, fucking went there, I'll give them double high fives and applaud my ass off. It's 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 for me, it's all about sharing expression and trying not to get caught up in what negative things people will have to say cuz frankly, there will always be those people. There will always be people who will shit on you, but they'll shit on you whether you make something or not. They'll shit on you regardless of if you perform. That's just a fact. But the people who don't want to shit on you and in fact are looking for something awesome, they'll never know how awesome you are until you show them. That's just a fact of life. So I hope that helps and I hope that folks uh, do the hashtag Libra Friends Sing Along Challenge. Uh, hashtag Libra Friends Sing Along is the hashtag. Uh, you have the month of January to upload your video. What is my video going to be? Well, uh, I was born on April 8th, 1988. So my song is Billy Ocean's Get Out of My Dreams, Get Into My Car. And uh, I just watched the music video for that for the first time and it's so bonkers that I really have to figure out how I wanna do this because I want it to be special. So I hope that y'all take part in that, and Melissa, I hope that that was helpful. Okay, um, Elmer. Hello, Elmer. Uh, oh good, you did say, <laughs> you did say I could use your name. I wasn't sure for a second. Um, Elmer uh, asked a question about follow through. He said he's 23, he's from New York, he's always had a love for photography, and he's always wanted to start shooting short videos and maybe making a career out of what he loves, but he feels like he can't seem to start. Uh, his insecurities get in the way. Uh, I know that you should always let yourself fail because that's how you learn, but I just can't get past it. I feel like I have all these great ideas I want to try, but I can't seem to follow through. Um, I even, you know, everyone around me is willing to support me and tells me to believe in myself. I guess I'm my own worst enemy. Okay, first of all, I just want to remind you, and I'm sure you're aware of this, how lucky you are that everyone around you is rooting for you. Because it's so often that that's not the case. Like, there are people who actively want to see you succeed and may even be willing to help you achieve your goals. That's rare, and that's awesome. So, first things first, 
You gotta, you gotta give, give, give it up a little bit for that, cause that's that's great. Um, in terms of getting over it, dude, I've been there, and I used to be the most insane, stupid perfectionist. And so many things I wouldn't even get started or I wouldn't finish because it just wasn't right and I didn't want people to see it and blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing. The great thing about being an artist is that after you've made something, it's up to you whether or not you want people to see it. You could shoot a whole feature length film and then fucking shelve it and, and never have people see it. That's your choice. That's your prerogative. So don't let, don't let your own fears of things not living up to what you wanted them to be prevent you from even trying. I think even just the act of making, the act of creating, it's not necessarily about the end result. All the lessons you're gonna learn are going to be lessons from when you're making the thing and then how you feel when you finally see it. It doesn't ever have to see the light of day, ever. No one can force you to do so unless you use their money to fund your thing. Um, just in terms of follow through, to work in this business, you have to have a level of passion that you will create even in a vacuum because you have no other choice. Um, it's the advice that I give to anybody who thinks about coming to Los Angeles for the arts or for entertainment, if they wanna be an actor, if they wanna be a writer, um, the kind of thing where you will be beating your head against a wall for years, beating your head against a door really, trying to get that door to open. And only people who have the discipline to keep creating even when something sucks, just to keep making stuff and learning lessons, it's those people who are going to get ahead, it's those people who are gonna get the jobs that you want. So if you wanna pursue this, you gotta just get over yourself and start making stuff that sucks and that's stupid. Uh, it's one of the reasons actually why I like Snapchat so much. And until I got Snapchat, I didn't get it, I didn't like it, but why I love Snapchat is that no matter what I make, it will be gone in 24 hours. And the vast majority of it is fucking stupid. It has no point, it has no purpose. But every once in a while, I make something and I'm like, that's fucking cool, or that actually really makes me laugh. And I'll save the clip. And uh, it's, it's just an opportunity to express yourself and get in the mode of not throwing away thoughts or moments or emotions and just putting it out there. Putting it out there over and over and over again. It's, it's like brain training. It's like training yourself to express and to let people into what you're thinking and feeling and what makes you laugh and what gets you excited. So if I were to give you some advice on follow through, maybe it's to start small. Start on the micro level and just start making Snapchat stories that make you laugh or that make you happy or that are interesting. And then save the clips that you like. Just start small because it's you can't make a clip that's longer than 10 seconds and you're doing it all at once. So start small and then build from there. And don't be afraid, don't be afraid to make something shitty. I've made a lot of terrible sketches in my life. Uh, you can find my old sketches from college, a lot of which were never released, or at least ones like with me and them were never released because I, I hated my acting back then. Um, but uh, you can find them on That's Awesome Comedy on, uh, on YouTube. And there is a sketch called Lie Bear where I am in a bear suit and it's so weird and stupid. It is not a good sketch. Uh, but at the time, I was like, I was so jazzed when I wrote it. And then I hate, I hate my performance in it top to bottom. And it's not what we intended, but it's still, it's still kind of funny. And it just is. It just is. I know that my skills far outweigh what they were when I was in college, but you know, it still is out there. It still exists and that's okay. It's my early stuff. It's the raw deep cuts and that's fine to have, dude. And you can release them or not. I hope that that helps. All right. Thank you for your email, Elmer. Uh, okay. 
This email is from Yoshi. Uh, Yoshi has been uh, having some trouble at home for a little while. His older sister uh, is, I guess, kind of a wild child and she's always fighting with his parents. There's a lot of shouting in, uh, in their home and it's a really bad environment. Um, I don't know what to do and how to make my parents proud. Uh, I have started a freelance photography company by myself and I've made a place within a production studio where I work. On top of that, I've been told time and again to leave what I'm doing to stop my passion by friends. And it's very disheartening as I respect them, I expect them to help, but they don't. And then they will always have many stores, not one reply. And I think it's all due to the way I look. Okay, um, Yoshi. I'm really sorry for what's going on at home. That sucks. And uh, especially when you're creating things, it's hard to do so when you don't have a great environment to, to do it in. And it's all about finding your own zen and your own calm and also trying to get out of there as soon as you can. It's a bad, bad environment, bad influence. It, it really bums me out that your friends are, not, are against you being a photographer. And I have no idea what you, you, you have neurofibromatosis, um, which is where small tumors grow around the whole body. And uh, why on earth the way that you look would, in, would have anything to do with whether or not you're a good photographer it doesn't make any fucking sense to me. It doesn't. If you're a good photographer or if you have a passion for photography, go and do it. Like, it, I... If they are telling you not to be a photographer because they think you don't look like a photographer, that doesn't make sense to me. And it disheartens me that you have friends who don't back you up. If it's your passion, pursue it. It's just, that, that is what it is. And it's, it's like I said earlier about creative pursuits. If there's, if there's anything that you could see yourself doing that you could actually be happy and satisfied doing, go ahead and do it. But if all you wanna do in your life, what you really wanna do is take photographs, then fuck everyone else. Take photographs. I mean, you're, you're already making a studio for yourself. You're already taking these photos. You're already, you already have a company. You're already on your way. If your friends don't support you, they are not great friends. And it's, it's, such, it's such bullshit advice to be like, you should find better friends. It's like, well, Lieberman, if I could, I would have them. But um, I think you have every right to say, to say to these people, hey, you guys are really not acting like my friends right now. That's not kind of you. This is what I wanna do with my life. And I, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. That's it. Um, yeah, that's what I got for you, man. I'm sorry that things aren't great right now. Please continue to pursue your photography, all right? Okay, um, all right, we got an email from a Libra friend. Uh, yeah, we have an email from a Libra friend uh, named Shane, and uh, he wants to pursue a music career, but his dad is way not into it, and he says that being a doctor is the only solution to a happy life. Uh, that is literally what he said. I'm not exaggerating. Dude, I know you're not exaggerating. That sounds very much like a dad thing, uh, and it's also crazy. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts because I feel like I'm really disappointing my family at this point. Uh, what do you do what, if you have a dream, you see the reason why your parents would be concerned, but your passion for aforementioned dream is too strong? Um, there comes a point in your life, I think in everyone's life, where you have to accept the fact that um, you will disappoint your parents. You will disappoint your parents. The life that you want is not the life that they want for you. It very, very rarely is. It is very rare that the two match up for anybody. Um, I was very lucky that my parents, even though they didn't, I wanted to go to college for acting. I wanted to be an actor and, uh, they were strictly against it. Um, they were strictly against it. They wanted, they pushed me to try to go into filmmaking instead because there were more jobs available. So they didn't say you can't be involved in the arts at all, but they were very concerned that I pick something that would give me the best opportunity for employment. 
Now, in terms of sound recording, there are plenty of jobs. I think that there is a way for you to, you know, pursue music and pursue the music industry while learning skills that can get you work and that can help calm them down. They're never gonna be happy, based on what your dad said, he's probably never gonna be happy that you don't wanna be a doctor. But that also doesn't mean that you should go be a doctor because your dad wants you to. You should do what you wanna do with your life. However, I do think it's prudent to pick, pick ways to pursue your passion that also leave you with skills that, be, that can be used for other jobs that are in that world but necess aren't necessarily the thing. You're not necessarily saying that you wanna be a musician, you're just saying you wanna pursue a music career or that you love music. Um, but the fact is you will disappoint your parents. My parents, I know, were really upset, really upset when I quit my job to pursue acting. I had no plan. Uh, I just couldn't do it anymore, and I quit. And uh, they thought it was a huge mistake. We were really at odds for a while, um, and uh, lots of discussions about money and concerns about the fact that I wasn't working, and uh, we clashed for a long time. And then, uh, I wanna say, 15 months after I quit my job, I got my job at SourceFed. Um, and now, even though they don't necessarily understand everything that I do for a living, they've accepted my decision to be a host and to, to be an entertainer because I was able to make it happen. So I would say you have to be okay with the fact that your parents may never be on board with the life that you want to choose for yourself. It's just some, it's something you have to accept. I'm lucky enough that I've now reached a place with my parents where even though I accepted that and I thought it might happen forever, it only lasted about a year. We're on very good terms now because they, they get it. They're just concerned. They, the parents just want you to be okay. They want you to have the best opportunity for a good life, for a secure life. And you know, being an artist is not secure. So you have to, it's hard, but there comes a point when everyone becomes an adult or, or reaches that age, when they have to accept that the life that they want is not the one that their parents wanted for them and that that is normal and that that can be okay and that old bridges can be rebuilt and that wounds can heal over time. There will be rough years and then there will be good years later. It's just, it's just a matter of really making that push and giving it everything. So arm yourself with the tools to be able to work in the field that you want. Pursue performance if that's what you wanna do as well, but it'll soften the blow for your parents if you put yourself in a position to get employed in that world uh, as much as you want to also be an artist in that world. That's what I got, Shane. All right, uh, oh yeah, we are just, uh, I wanna say we're cruising, but we still got so many. Uh, okay, this Libra friend, uh, she is 25, she's living in, uh, she's living in the, <laughs> she's living in the town she was born and raised, sitting on top of a master's degree with her Jack Russell Terrier. Hasn't had luck in relationships, in fact, I've had one true relationship when I was 18 until we broke up almost two years later when he moved. It took me years to start dating again. In fact, I didn't go on my first date post-relationship until last year. I have heard you say you enjoy going on first dates. That's great, I try to have the same outlook. A couple of weeks ago, I signed up for eHarmony with the thought, why not? And I went on my first eHarmony date last night, went to dinner and then to The Hobbit, and then he sat in my car for two hours talking. Now I'm the sort of person who listens and interjects here and there, but I don't usually dominate conversations. That was obvious here. There were a few warning signs that I picked up on from him, but in general, I just wasn't feeling it. I'm also the type of person who constantly thinks about the other's feelings. I'm listening to my gut, heart, and brain to know that this guy is not for me. But how do I tell him? He texted me last night and said he had a great time. I texted back, it was nice. Uh, that already makes me anxious that I'm being mean. He texted back and asked if I'm sure. Then he texted me goodnight, are you okay, and good morning by the time I woke up. I still have not said anything because I do not know what to say and how to let him know I'm not interested. 
I am sure there is a way, but I just don't like to hurt feelings. I apologize for the long email. Thanks. Uh, okay, first of all, this is far from the longest email I've ever received. I receive novels. If you, if anyone is a publisher, I'm not going to publish your emails. I'm, I'm doing a bit, but let me finish the bit. If anyone's a publisher and you're looking for novels, I have several that have been sent to me. Um, so here's the deal, Lieber friend. Uh, it is okay that you do not like this dude. Uh, it is more than okay. It's natural, and it's just a fact. Um, when you are dating. You kind of, I, I feel this too, and it, it, I am a sucker for like, I'll start dating someone and I'll realize I'm not into it and I will delay pulling the trigger because I feel so bad. I'm like, I can't leave this person, they need me, even though we just met, or you know, they like me so much, I wish that I was there too, I wanna try to get there and then I can't. And then uh, it ultimately winds up being a lot worse because you've been, they've been interested in you or developing feelings for you for longer and then it's harder to disentangle. Um, I have a lot of female friends who tell me never to respond. <laughs> they tell me to never to respond to, uh, to a girl that I am dated or I'm dating that I'm no longer interested in. I disagree because I think that's really shitty to do to another person. Uh, he texted you last night and said he had a great time. You texted back, it was nice. Um, then he texted you like three more times in one night. Uh, which if you're ever in a situation where someone hasn't texted you back, uh, don't text them three times in one night. You wait. Seriously? And like, I hate games, but I don't consider it a game. It's just, when you look overly concerned, when you do that, uh, and this guy looks way too concerned, he is way more invested than you in whatever this was going to be. Um, so it is okay to just say, hey man, you know, I had an okay time with you, you seem like a very nice person, but I'm not interested. That's it, just tell the truth, just be honest. If he decides to get ugly and like say some mean shit to you just for telling him the truth, then he's not a good person. So don't be afraid of that. And if and if he sends back something awful, just delete it and try to move on. It's not the truth. It is just somebody who is upset that they didn't get their way. But I always am on the side of when you feel something, say something. And if you feel an absence of feelings, you should say something. Uh, telling the truth as soon as possible is the best way to have a relationship or a friendship or a working relationship. It's, it's, you, it is when we don't speak that miscommunications occur and misconceptions occur. It is only when we tell the truth that we are being honest, that we are being honest with ourselves and that we are pursuing the life that we deserve. So, text this dude. Text this, oh wow, this is from five days ago. But uh, you need to just, in this situation, in this kind of situation, just tell the truth. I had an okay time, I, or like I had a good time last night, but this just isn't for me. I apologize um, if I made you feel otherwise. Um, but it just is, I hope you have a great life. See ya. There, there are over six billion people on the planet. The other person will find someone, so will you. Don't feel guilty about it. It's just, it's just what happens. Um, I can't remember the names of everyone I've been on a date with. And I've been on like just one date, I've been on two dates, maybe three dates, lots of people. Um, and uh, most of them didn't work out. A lot of them didn't work out after like one date or two, or even before we went on a date because we were just talking and texting or messaging and realize, oh yeah, there's nothing here. It's okay to say, no thank you. And it's okay, I feel like a lot of the bad relationships in the world uh, occur when someone is too afraid of being alone to admit that they're not into the other person. And then 
you date or you're together for like months or years and then things blow up and get messy and muddy and both people feel like they wasted all their time. You got to be honest with you first and then you can be honest with them. All right, more relationship questions. I've decided to try to structure the types of questions into chunks. That's, that's, the, new, that's the new approach and we are 30 minutes in. Okay, um, all right. New email from a Libra friend. Hey Matt, I'm sorry if you've answered this type of question before, but I just recently started watching you and like how you give advice. So here's my thing. My friend is stuck in an emotionally abusive relationship. She realizes this, but she doesn't want to leave her friend slash girlfriend slash ex because the abuser apparently has no one and has parents that ignore her. The abuser said that they love my friend more than anyone and used to control who she was able to talk to, but the real kicker is that they're both 15 years old. Um, uh, this Libra friend says, I realize how messed it up is how messed up it is that 15 year olds are going through this. <sighs> Believe me, I know. And it's, it's, it happens all the time, especially in high school. Um, they've been friends for years and my friend just keeps coming back, even causing an eating disorder at one point. This might be out of your range of advice since it's intense, but I'm running out of options considering my friend refuses any help and only turns to me as her family's pretty shitty as well. Um, Libra friend, I, I'm sorry to hear about this. I'm sorry to hear about your friend. I'm sorry that you feel like you don't have a ton of options because you're your friend's only outlet and you're not entirely sure what to do. Um, I guess I would tell your friend that if the reason why they keep coming back to this person who keeps hurting them is that they don't want to abandon them, that they, they feel like they're the abuser has no one is that this person who treats her poorly is not her responsibility. One of the hardest things for people like us to do, people who feel deeply and care about other people is to know when to walk away and to know at some point if there's nothing that you can do to help someone and they continue to lower your quality of life, that sometimes it's okay and even justified to just walk away. To just walk away and say, I'm sorry, but I need to, I need to say goodbye now because you've done horrible things to me and continue to. Or just my state of mind is not well and being around you makes it worse. I wish I had something more concrete to tell you. I wish that I could give you a set of steps to follow, but I don't have a ton of information here. It sounds like they need to get away from this person and they need to know that it is okay to let them go and that this other person not only isn't their responsibility, but shouldn't be because they've lost the right to have your friend care about them. I hope that helps. All right. <clears throat> Uh, I got an email from a friend, a Libra kind of friend, and I want to know what it says. Here it goes. My friend just got introduced to someone surprisingly very close to my type of girl. We share 85% of interests in TV, uh, TV shows, music, movies, and all that jazz. My friend also shares similar interests with her, but not the same as with me and her. I lent help and advice when he asked for it, but deep down I wish it was me who was in his place doing the things that I advised. Uh, you can tell where this email is going. Uh, Libra friend. Oh, I'm going to say some stuff that you don't want to hear, but you sent me an email because you wanted me to tell you anyway. Bro, your friend is dating the girl. It's, it's a no-go. I'm sorry. You, like, I hate the phrase bros before hoes because it's very sexist, but it's just in general, if your friend, first of all, your friend is with this girl. So if you're really friends with this dude, you'll back the fuck off, period. Um, you should be happy for your friend that they met someone awesome. Uh, if you have feelings for her or you feel uncomfortable giving your friend advice uh, to better woo this girl that you have feelings for, then maybe you just pump the brakes on giving him advice. Don't date her by proxy by telling her what you would do, or telling him what you would do. It's not healthy. Um, it's not a healthy situation. Yeah, uh, 
if you really are friends with this dude and your friendship matters more to you than feelings for a girl who, you know, might not necessarily like you back and with whom, even though things seem like you would work well together, you don't really know if you would work well together, then you gotta let that shit go. You gotta let that shit go, dude. It's your friend's girlfriend. You can't. There's nothing, it's, it's ineffable. There's nothing to be done. And hopefully over time, you can come to accept the reasons why they work well together and be happy that they are. I have a friend who is with uh, someone who I had some feelings for that I had a crush on for a long time. And uh, it, I was kind of flabbergasted when they got together and almost like a little like internally furious but they're so good together. They work so well together. And honestly, like having seen them together now for such a long period of time, uh, they work so much better together than she and I would have, even though I was convinced of the opposite. It's, it, that's just a fact. So you gotta let it go and know that, uh, you say a girl like her comes along once in a lifetime, you don't even know, dude. There are going to be so many incredible women that you will meet in your life. It doesn't feel that way, and it feels like bullshit when you hear me say it. It is the truth. I've lived it. Please believe me. Every crush that you will ever have in your life will be topped by another crush. Every single one. Every single one. It's impossible to believe, but it's the truth. Every single crush will one day be topped by someone else. So don't get so hung up on each one. The fact is, you will have feelings for so many people in your lifetime. So many people. It's okay to let feelings go. There will be someone else. I swear to you. I hope that helps. All right, a uh, Lieber friend has sent an email three days ago. Here it goes. Hey Matt, I never thought I would write to you, but I feel like I waste so much of my life being upset and I don't know what to do. I'm a 19 year old girl and it's sad, but I feel that romantic relationships are the only thing that can make me actually happy in life. However, as soon as I sense a change in the relationship, less communication, ignoring texts, etc., it's all I can think about, which usually leads to me making a fuss and that's probably what leads to the end of the relationship. Things just ended with a guy who treated me really great at the beginning, so I'm in a really depressed state. My friends have partners that treat them like gold, so I often wonder why I'm so alone. I want to know if it's my fault for being overbearing and possibly having unrealistic expectations or if I should expect better due to the fact that I would literally do anything for someone I care for. And why can't all the hobbies and such that I partake in allow me to be happy by myself? Thanks so much for all that you do. Please don't include my name. And I didn't. Uh, so, Lieber friend, few things. Um... I don't know that I'm capable of answering all these questions. So a lot of them are ones that you're gonna have to answer for yourself. Um, I think that the key to happiness, and I think you're aware of this, you're just not sure how to achieve it. The key to happiness uh, lies in self-love. And it lies in not requiring another person to make you happy and being able to generate it yourself. And if you watch my videos, I talk a lot about having a state of mind where you know that happiness is a process and it's something that you have to work for every day um, by giving yourself the most opportunities to feel fulfilled and to feel like you're doing something with your life and to not get bogged down by how stressful your day-to-day -day life is. Uh, I think that being happy is something that everyone wants but few people are really willing to put the work in to have and to keep um, because it's fleeting. Happiness is fleeting. It just is. 
and it's just something that we have to push for every day, even after we feel like we got it. You have to stay regimented. It's like it's like any routine. Um, now, I'm not going to tell you that ending the end of this relationship or other relationships are or aren't your fault, because uh, that's just looking for self-blame. Um, if you think you are being overbearing or that you do have unrealistic expectations, I think that those are those are reasons why relationships end. I don't know if that's the truth because I don't know you. Um, it could just be what you're feeling inside. Uh, I guess the best advice I can give you in regards to relationships uh, is to calm down. Calm down. First of all, all your friends who have partners who treat them like gold, uh, I guarantee you that that isn't always the case. I guarantee you that you, if you're all 19, a lot of those relationships are gonna end pretty soon in like the next couple of years. And I don't mean to be glib or dark about that, it's just the truth. Um, a lot of relationships will end for various reasons. Uh, and you, it's also impossible to know what a relationship is really like from the outside. Uh, when you sense a change in the relationship, it's all you can think about, which usually leads to me making a fuss. You have to be okay with discomfort in a relationship. Um, yeah, if things, if things like, if, if someone starts ignoring you, uh, you have every right to just ask, to say what's up or like I'm feeling I'm feeling ignored. It's okay to say it and to say it calmly because you're just expressing yourself. If you're terrified that a person is going to leave you, terrified that a person is going to leave you, especially after something that's very when you're in something that's still very short term, then maybe it is time to like dial the throttle back and not get so attached to people. You're gonna date a lot of partners in your life and it's okay to just say when you meet someone, okay, I recognize that I like this person, I recognize that I wanna be with this person, uh, I'm just gonna you know, take it day by day and see how it goes. It's just, it is what it is. Um, I think that the first problem we talked about will inform the second, which is that Trying to find fulfillment in other things and in yourself is gonna make it Make you feel a lot less anxious when you're in relationships with other people. I mean you may want to just Take a take a break from dating for a while and just try to focus on in creating some good cornerstones in your life that make you happy um Make a list of things that you've never done before that you want to try and do the ones that are easy to do. Uh, it's not necessarily just that you do stuff or that things you like are going to make you happy. It comes down to whether or not you love who you are. And it's something that unfortunately I can't do for you. It's, it's a journey that everyone takes. I wasn't there when I was 19. I wasn't there when I was 22. I wasn't there until maybe I was like midway through 23 or 24 really. And there are days where I still don't. It's a process. But accepting that it's a process and that it's okay to be where you are and that it's okay to be alone right now and that it's okay that your friends are, have relationships and you don't right now, accepting that you can't control the world around you, but you can control yourself, can bring a great deal of joy and self-reflection. I hope that helps. Okay. Um, all right. This Libra friend is writing to me uh, from Florida, uh, and he wants to know about marijuana. Um, he said, you used to smoke a lot of weed. You said so on a table talk and how it became a problem. I too have the same problem, but I can't seem to overcome it. It's my senior year of high school and I'm not doing so hot. I smoke every chance I get and I'm always high. 
I think it's actually beginning to affect my mental abilities and thought processing. I just don't feel like my old self anymore. I don't want to totally quit smoking because everyone likes a beer now and again. I think you're using a euphemism. Like it's like beer, I get it. Um, but I just want to know how you dealt with doing things and not being high. Sadly, I'm sadly high as I'm writing this and I hope it makes some sense to you. I battle a lot with a lot of depression and anxiety so everything just kind of falls into a big ball of shit. Whatever advice you can give me would really be taken to heart. Okay, Libra friend. Um, the hardest thing when you recognize that uh, you're deeply ingrained in a bad pattern with a substance, um, especially marijuana, uh, is the hard thing is relearning how to have fun without it. Because that's part of the cycle is like you, you smoke weed before you eat because you know you're gonna enjoy it more. You smoke weed before you go to a movie because you know you'll like it, or you think you'll like it more because you're high. You smoke weed before, you smoke weed before, you smoke weed before, and it just becomes this thing that like, months down the road, you don't wanna do anything unless you can smoke beforehand because that's how you think it's the best, it's the best possible way to enjoy it. Having come out on the other side, there are some things that I think, <laughs> I think marijuana will always make better, like uh, listening to certain kinds of music, but, um, I've learned and had to relearn that I actually enjoy things a lot more sober when I'm able to feel whatever they're supposed to make me feel, when I'm able to understand everything, when I'm awake, when I'm able to have a conversation without being anxious. I, when I quit marijuana, I sat in my apartment. I would just gotten a Keurig brewer and uh, I subbed coffee for marijuana, which probably wasn't the smartest thing. But I just sat in my apartment for like a week and a half uh, over Christmas break and like the ensuing, you know, couple of days after and just got used to being in my space, doing the things I would normally do high sober, which was really fucking weird. It was really weird. I watched the whole first season of Boardwalk Empire in that, in like the first day, and I have never felt so bored in my life. And I'm like, why am I so bored? I used to love watching a TV show all day. And I came to realize that I actually don't. I actually don't like sitting around all day. I just never wanted to go anywhere because I was high all the time. I learned something about myself. Um, I think it's just when battling with substances, the moment for me and the thought for me that really hit home and got me to the point where I'm like, I don't wanna do this anymore and I wanna try to live my life is just, I wanna feel everything, even if it sucks. Even if it, it means I have to feel pain and I have to feel anger and I have to feel anxiety. I want to feel everything because it's been so long since I have. I wanna reconnect with who I am. It's a desire. It's something you have to want. It's the same way that like someone couldn't quit cigarettes unless they could see themselves living a life where they weren't smoking. Not just because of health things, because they actively didn't want to. It's something you have to want. Only then can you really develop the self-control necessary to do it. Now you say you wanna be able to smoke every now and again, I get that. Um, you need to just make some rules and follow them and I would highly recommend that one of them is at least for the first three to six months, you just don't partake at all. And that sounds crazy to you or like overly stringent but with anything, whether it's a relationship or a drug or anything that is harmful, a bad friendship, you need to develop time. You need to develop a space for you to come to terms with what life is without that thing. And that means not interacting with it for a long time so that you are actively giving your brain and your soul and your body a chance to adjust and to figure out how to stand on your own two feet without that thing. 
I know everything that you're feeling right now because I used to be there. Not as young as you, um, but it's something you have to want. I honestly think that you quitting and you getting back on the horse of feeling and being actively there mentally is going to do wonders for you. It's going to feel really awful and hard for a little while. Um, but I would highly recommend sublimating with something else. When you want to smoke pot, go for a run, make a cup of coffee, chew some gum, draw a picture, whatever it is, do the thing over and over and over again. Break the habit by building a new habit in its stead. That's really, really helpful. Um, I hope that helps. All right. Uh, all right, so we still have, we are 51 minutes and I still have five emails left. Here we go. Um, so this email is from a Libra friend uh, who is dealing with something really painful um, and they have been for some time. Uh, their father died of a heart attack a couple years ago. Um, her name is Katie and uh, and um, she's still dealing with grief and guilt. Why guilt? Um, he died of a heart attack uh, at his house at a not, on a night where she was supposed to be there and instead she was at her mom's house uh, partying and she can't get over the idea. She understands logically that, uh, you know, it's not her fault, but she can't help but feeling that way. And she's gone through a lot of self-destructive behaviors in the last couple of years um, because she it's still very much on her mind. <sighs> Katie, first of all, I'm sorry for your loss. I don't know what it's like to lose a parent. Um, I imagine it is an incredibly difficult and painful thing. I know that you've probably thought it before and maybe you won't even believe it when it comes out of my mouth. But first of all, what happened to your father is not your fault. Life happens to all of us and Frankly, it could have happened to you, it could have happened to someone else. And even if you were there, there is no guarantee that your father would still be alive. There is nothing that can be done. There is no way to go back in time. This is what life is now. You're not responsible for your father's death. And you don't need to keep beating yourself up for something that you honestly have no power over. Our lives are potential energy. Everything that we can do, every moment is packed with potential energy. Things that you can accomplish, things that you can do. When we look back, when we're nostalgic or when we rake ourselves over the coals for past mistakes, misconceived wrongs, looks that were never met or that made us feel awful, we're not, we're not capitalizing on that potential energy. We're wasting moments. Now, in terms of your behavior since then, you know that you're not happy with it. You're trying to curb a lot of it. Can you hear this dog right now? There's a dog outside and it's distracting. Um, There comes a point where you have to stop beating yourself up over it, over what happened to your dad, over what's been going on with you. Um, you gotta, at some point you gotta just say, okay, fine. This bad thing happened to me. It really fucking sucks. I wasted a lot of time feeling sorry for myself. I don't have to do that anymore. 
I don't have to be that person anymore. I can be whoever I want to be. There is a moment that you can have, that you can claim, where you say, I am not going to waste my life. My life is not the one that I intended to have, but I can make the best possible life from the one that I do. There is nothing standing in the way of that except yourself. It's, it's, it is the truth. It is the God's honest truth. I spent a lot of time being angry with my dad. Being angry with my dad for not being the father that I needed when I was a kid. Or the father that I wanted when I was a teenager. Or the father that I wish he was when I was a young adult. Every year, I come to understand him better. And I'm able to let more of my anger go. But for a long time, I acted out. I wasn't doing schoolwork. I would spend money like crazy. I had an online, I, I used to have like an online shopping addiction. Like I couldn't help myself. And it was all just, I was taking out on myself anger that I had towards another person. I was actively self-destructive over things that I had no control over. They're in the past. There's nothing that can be done to change what has happened to you. But everything can be done to create a future that you want. Take your potential energy and apply it because you have untold power. I hope that this is helpful for you. I, I pray that this sparks, this is just some kind of universe coming back and telling you that it is okay for you to live a good life. Your father would not want, and I know you're aware of this, and I'm sorry if, if this is painful to hear, your father would not want you to be living a life that you weren't happy with. He wouldn't want you to be living a life that was beneath you. And I know that you don't want it either. You have the potential to have whatever fucking life you want. Life is cruel and life is short. But the world can be beautiful and it can be good. It really can, even in the wake of tragedy. I was talking about this with my friend Alex last night. Um, the idea that all prisons, even actual physical prisons, are just in our mind. What does that mean, Lieberman? If you're locked up behind bars, you are still in prison. Fair. But I am positive that there are prisoners out there in the world who are, have a better state of mind than a lot of us in, uh, that are out here. Any time that you put a prison around yourself, that you feel that you are trapped in a situation, that you feel that you are incapable of being or doing, you know, anything, being the, the person that you want to be, having the life that you want, it is limits that we put on ourselves. Choose to be limitless because our potential is limitless. The prison is just in your mind. You can escape right now. Go do something. Go do something for you. Something positive. Something happy. Something fun. Do something positive for you. I believe in you. And thank you for writing. All right. Okay. Um, all right. Emma, hello Emma, writes, uh, she's in the senior year of high school, she's trying to decide what to do with her life, she loves music and acting, performance arts and stuff like that, um, but uh, you know, if I did that I could be happy, uh, but I also want to have a stable job and flow of money, plus none of my siblings have any sort of good life for themselves, so I feel pressure to go to college. I'm good at chemistry and I understand it, um, but I don't think it's what you really want to do. 
you found a school that you think would be really good for you, but everyone in your family except for your your mom doesn't think that it's a good school for you. I don't feel like I have support for anything that I want to do, even after I'm already caving to what they expect. Okay, you have to do what you think is right. Follow your gut. Fuck everyone else. It's it, it, truth. God's honest truth. You don't have to cave to what they want. Even if it makes your life harder, go for the things that you want to go for. Trust yourself. If you don't learn to trust yourself, you never will. And frankly, a lot of people, when you ask people for advice, even me, you are asking them to tell you what, based on their own fears and anxieties, and uh, opinions what they would do. They don't know what is right for you. They just know what is and isn't right for you based on what they think about the world. They know what isn't right for them and they will tell you it is also not right for you. Just apply. What's the harm in applying? Apply to this other school, okay? And you know, don't just do something just because you're good at it if you don't think you'll have a good life doing it. Don't. It's, it's a waste. I'm a good cook, but I, and I almost didn't, like, ran away from entertainment and wanted to go to culinary school. But uh, I think I would actually be pretty miserable as a chef. And it didn't occur to me at the time because I was so frustrated with things not going well in performing arts. You can't just do something just because you're good at it. I could have been a st I could have been on Wall Street. I was good at it, and uh, I'm glad that I didn't because I would be miserable. Don't do something you don't want to do just because you're good at it. And follow your gut and apply to the fucking school. Apply to the school, Emma. I don't want to hear that you didn't apply. Apply, and then everything else. You know, if you have to decide between colleges, the, all that anxiety comes later. Apply, apply, apply. All right. Um, okay. Uh, all right. So this email is from uh, a 15 year old lady from Northern New Jersey, not far from my hometown, apparently, um, with uh, social and general anxiety. Uh, she feels like she's been having frequent nervous breakdowns at school, usually due to her friends. Don't get me wrong, I love my friends, but sometimes it feels like they're too self-absorbed to care about what I'm saying when I'm talking to them. On top of that, they brush me off when I try to tell them that I'm having a real problem with my anxiety or just have a problem in general and instead launch into the, oh, you think you have problems speech. My breakdowns keep getting me sent home from school and the missed work is causing even more stress. It overall just leaves me feeling lonely and depressed. I've been seeing a therapist, but I feel like she's always giving me the same advice over and over, find new friends. As you were a teenager once, you can imagine how much help that gives me. None. I hear you, amen, God bless. Um, what I'm really asking is how do I stop letting other people get to me on such a twisted level? 90% of my panic attacks are caused by others and I can't stand how fragile I am. Okay. Um, I think arming yourself with some knowledge could be a good start, which is, uh, it sounds like your friends are teenagers. A lot of times, and this was true of me, uh, when you are a very sensitive person with a lot of deep emotion, and even a lot of anxiety, it can be very, very hard when you're young to meet people who fucking get it and are actually able to listen to you in a real way and not just wait for the next opportunity for themselves to speak. Um, as sad as it is, because obviously you want them to be the kinds of friends that you require, if they're not going to be that type of friend, it's not, the worst thing in the world. It is okay. It's okay to be able to compartmentalize and say, you know, I love these people. They are my friends, but I know if I come to them with something deep, they're not going to give me any kind of relief. And I can find other friends that get it and that can actually give me real support. Know that there's nothing wrong with you, that you are okay, that you are a good person. Having anxiety 
and being afraid about your life while the fact that you know you call them breakdowns while they are becoming a problem and that's giving you real anxiety being pragmatic and saying I need to stay in school as much as I can my work is a priority to me because that's what I want to be doing I'm not a bad person for having a complicated life that's okay that's all fucking normal it really is I used to get panic attacks I used to get panic attacks in high school and uh, while they don't seem to be as frequent as yours, um, I would just have this immediate thing of like, I need to go home, I need to lie down on my bed, I need to go home, I need to lie down on my bed, I need to go home, I need to lie down on my bed. And I think it was like three or four times I, I had to just go home because I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't stay there. I couldn't stay there anymore. Um, I also think, uh, it, depending on how long you've been seeing this therapist, you should try to find another therapist because that's not a, that's not advice. Find new friends is not advice. Uh, if the anxiety is if the anxiety is coming from when I tell my friends how I'm feeling, they offer me no support. Uh, then I understand why she's saying find new friends. Just don't share that stuff with those friends. Don't share that stuff with those friends. Come join the, the Libra Friend Google Hangouts and meet some people who fucking get it. That's one of the reasons why I'm so proud of this community is because it is the kind of people, and these people, the Libra Friends, the people who watch these videos and the people who come on the Google Hangouts, by and large, they're the people that I wish I knew in high school. They're the people who know that it's okay to be weird, that life isn't perfect, that we can be sad, and that we can fuck up and still be happy tomorrow and still be okay people in the long run. There are plenty of people in this community who would love to be your friend. And uh, I think in terms of getting over your anxiety, maybe finding a new therapist could be helpful. I hate saying this because like it's the same thing that like caused me to like fucking scream and cry at my mom this one time when I was in high school. But take care of the work that's building up. I used to have the same problem. I would wait till the end of a semester to do like a semester's worth of work, and it would nearly it would give me panic attacks. It would keep me up at night. It was awful. You can do the work. You can handle the stress. You can handle the strain. You can handle more stress than you are even aware of right now. The amount of anxiety that you have, so many people will never deal with that in their life. And because you are dealing with it and you are surviving, guess what? You're gonna be able to handle a hell of a lot when you're older. Stick it out. Come up with methods of survival. Journal blog, vlog, find ways to express yourself that get those feelings out even if you're not able to get guidance or support from people around you. For me, it was karaoke. It was just, no one is gonna get what I'm going through right now. I feel alone, I hate my job, I hate my life, I hate not being stoned. But at once a week, I would go by myself and I would just sing my heart out and it would make my soul feel lighter. I highly encourage you to just find an outlet to put your feeling into. It'll help, I promise. Okay, last two. Um, all right, email from a Libra friend. Libra friend writes, Hey Matt, I'm currently in a situation I'm not sure how to handle. I'm currently 15 and I've been friends with this girl for two to three years. About a year ago, she confessed to me that she liked me and had since the sixth grade. I myself had also liked her, but didn't confess that to her because I was afraid if we dated, something would go wrong and we wouldn't stay friends. I felt like she was the only person I could truly speak my mind to and understood me, which is why I was afraid of losing her. As of now, we still talk occasionally, but I feel that like she's uninterested in me and our conversations even as friends. And I can't help but think I caused what I had feared by not dating her. I still have feelings for her. However, I'm not sure if she feels the same about me. I'm not sure what to do. I was wondering what you thought about it. Uh, Libra friend, I think you need to tell your friend how you feel. And you need to ask what's up with what they're doing and tell them how that makes you feel. Open the line of communication again. If you want to be with this person, 
be with her. If you, if you don't, if you just want to be friends, but you want to repair the friendship, say that. But let your friend know how much they matter to you. Because it's entirely possible that they don't know. Just have the conversation. Be honest. That's all you need to hear. I see no reason not to. Go. Tell your friend what's up. Please. Okay. Final email at one hour and ten minutes. Uh, okay. This email is... All over the place. Um, so, this Libra friend... Uh, let's see. Okay. Basically, I'll just, I'll sum it up. This Libra friend, um, oh, okay, I can say your name. Raymond. My Libra friend Raymond, uh, has a problem, which is basically that he has one friend in his new school, um, who has been friends with him for many years, but his friend is kind of being a huge dick right now. Uh, he keeps abandoning him. He's like hanging out with upperclassmen. He's like popular and cool and, you know, leaves our friend Raymond fucking feeling like a chump. Cause he'll say, yeah, I'm not hungry. I'll wait for you outside. And then he's not there. That's bullshit, Raymond. That's bullshit. You deserve better than that. There's nothing wrong with you. You never did anything wrong. Why the fuck is your friend being so shitty? I imagine you've had all these thoughts before. Um... I'm sorry that, you're, that your friend is changing and being kind of a dick. Um, the fact is, in life, people change. Sometimes for the worse. Sometimes imperceptibly at first. And then you wake up one day and you're like, wait a minute, when did my friend become such an ass? <sighs> I'm sorry that you don't have more friends because that would make it a lot easier to just to accept that your relationship is changing. But knowing, there is a freedom in knowing that your friendship may never return to what it is and that you have the power to tell your friend that he's been kind of a dick to you and to express yourself and say how that makes you feel and give your friend the opportunity to try to make that right or not. Um, you definitely have that right. That is a very, very true right of yours. Um... In terms of like meeting new people, I mean, college, or sorry, high school is, is it's hard. I know that it's hard. Uh, I, obviously, you want to make new friends. I don't have tons of advice for you that I haven't already given. You know, find people who like the same things as you is a great place to start. Joining some clubs, doing some activities, and just being open, saying hi more often. I feel like after we get a certain amount of no's in our life, it becomes so much harder for us to say yes to people. The fact is, everyone will receive tons of no's in their life, but they will also receive yeses. Keep saying hi. Keep trying to bridge the gap and make the connection. Just be friendly. Be cordial. Don't be desperate to make a friend. Be glad that you have the freedom to do so. This music that my neighbors are playing is driving me nuts because I'm trying to give you good advice. Um, but in any case, uh, I wish you all the best. I know that you're going through a rough period right now, but I have faith that you will pull through on the other side. Keep coming back. Please try to join our Libra Friends Google Hangouts. Meet some awesome people. Um, and uh, I wish you well. Folks, that's going to be all for me today. This was a very, very long episode. Uh, and I need to figure out a way to make them shorter because it's I know it must be a slog to get through um, Continue to send me your emails Matt Lieberman official at gmail.com. There will be a vlog on Monday uh, And then uh, Google hangout on Thursday. We did the first one this week, and uh, I think it was a big success We had like uh, 80 something people watching a bunch of people got to join I got to meet a bunch of new people and then they all joined a hangout after I left and uh, got to continue hanging out all night. And um, that really makes me happy. So be well, my friends, my Libra friends. I will see you on Monday.